Okay, so today we're back and we're going to dive a little bit more deeply into uh, dictionaries. So the first thing that I wanted to kind of show you, which I did for lists, but we, didn't ha we haven't done for dictionaries yet, is if we go into the interpreter and we go help, and we go, we did help list, right? But let's go help dict, and that for, stands for dictionaries. And we're going to scroll down here um, to pass the under under stuff, right? And there are the dictionary methods or functions. So we've got clear, copy, from keys, um, get. Now, um, Get it to me actually is uh, the same as doing a lookup. Let's test that out. So if I if I make a dictionary here, and let's just pull this over so I can, yeah, and let's go down a little bit. If I said um, I Python, and I said D equals Oops, like that. And let's go A1. Oops, A1, B2. And if that's my dictionary, and if I go find me the va do a lookup on the key B. That's how you do the lookup. But they're saying you can also do get and um, B. So both ways work. Um, to me, this is how I do this is how I always did it, and I guess there's more than one way to do this. Um, items is, is interesting. We went over this le last time. d.items um, is a function call, and it returns a list of tuples of the keys and the... So, for example, you could go for key comma value, right? This is the first time where you've seen a for loop with two things in the indice instead of just saying for x in. Now you can go for kv. It doesn't have to be kv, by the way. KV just, I like those two variables because they start for keys and values in d.items. And that's usually the way that it's used. And then you would go print k, comma, v. Ah. And so you could print the keys and the values. Once again, I did this last time. There is another way to do this, right? And you could just go for k in d.keys. And if, if I show you what d.keys, and actually is that, yeah, that's the next one, yay. Keys uh, is going to give me a, a list of just the keys. So if I wanted to iterate over the dictionary, I could also go um, for uh, k in d.keys. Now, I just want to say something before I can, I'm just going to do this. And um, there's something that's going to be a little bit odd, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Uh, this one would be k, right? And then the lookup. So here I'm doing here I'm doing the lookup actually in the print call, and so I'd go dk, and so then you'd get just like before. Okay. Um, however, the other thing is watch this. This should work too, for k in d. So if I, you know, what's in d? The, the entire dictionary. But if I said for k, it doesn't have to be k again. That's just a variable. In d, and I went print k, I still, I still get the keys, even without going d.keys. So that's cool. And so the reason for this is, watch this. Here's something that you could, that's the, here's something that's super cool, and you're going to need this 
uh, in this lesson is you, the, the in keyword. So for example, I could say, is A in D true? Okay. Is Z in D false? So when it says in, you're actually looking in the keys. Now you could go, you could go dot keys, but it works without it too. Um, because it defaults to the to the keys. Because it's it's not doing any lookups, and that's the only thing in there. Other the only way to get the values is to do a lookup. Um, the other the other interesting thing is um, there's pop. Okay, now pop is going to take out something based on the key. Notice here, you can't really see everything because it's um, obscured. But here it says pop remove specific key and return the corresponding value. Okay, uh, now it, notice it says if it's not found, a, a, a key error is returned. So in other words, if I go d.pop, and I'm going to go A. It returns the value. It's just like pop in a list, right? It returns the value, but now it's out of the dictionary. It's, it's taken out. Um, however, if I try to pop something that's not in, no, so remember, you know, pop in a list is done by indice. This is not by indice, this is by key. Very big difference. Okay. However, what if I try and remove something that doesn't exist? Well, I get an error. And your program crashes. This is not good. How do you prevent this? Easy. You just put an if statement. So you say if, um, you would say, you know, something like C in D, and you can, or you can go D.keys. Okay. Then you would say d.pop c. And when you run this, nothing happens and your program doesn't crash. And that's because the first statement is false. And so it doesn't execute the, the block. It doesn't execute the pop, which is good because you don't want your program to crash just because you're trying to remove something that doesn't exist. And if you want to remove something that does exist, right? Well, oops. And then, and then it's going to uh, work because now there's nothing in D anymore, whereas before we had the, the B2. Great. Um, then there's pop item. I don't usually use pop item very much. Um, and the other one that I think you should know, uh, we're not, we won't do this, the set the default. Um, you, can, you, can, you can do it if you want, but in some situations it is useful, uh, but it won't be on uh, part of my course right now. Uh, the other one is values, and that's kind of important as well. So um, if we go to, oops, well, anyways, we'll, we'll go to values here. So there's nothing in D right now. Um, but what I wanted to kind of show you here is uh, let's do something fun. And uh, before I show you dot values, actually here, let's just, I'm probably going to forget if I don't do it now. So uh, there, here's, here's a, a dictionary now. And um, if I go d dot values, uh, it's going to return all the values as a list. Okay, so I can iterate over it as well. Here's something cool. If you remember, I'm going to give you a little assignment, and then this is a very tiny one. It'll be short. If you remember the function uh, chr and ORD, um, you remember we could print out for um, 
x in range. We could print out all the alphabet, right? For x in range. Um, remember how we did this? It was ORD A, comma, ORD Z. But we had to go plus one because we have to include Z. And then if I go print X, what do we get? So this is actually from the ASCII table. These values are from the, it starts at 97 and goes to 122. And if we go to the ASCII table, man, as, oops, ASCII, there we go, spelt that right. Um, right, so where is lowercase a here? There's uppercase a is 65. There it is, 97, okay? And z is uh, 122, right there. So, okay, now that, we've, now that we can do that, right, here's your mini assignment. Create a dictionary where you have a dictionary where the letters of the alphabet are the keys and the ASCII table values are the values, okay? So basically, I'm asking you to recreate the ASCII table, but in a dictionary with the alphabet as the keys. So pause the video and give it a shot. All right, so let's go over the solution. So here we go. We're going to basically do the same type of loop, right? Except before we do this loop, we've got to create a dictionary that's empty. And then we'll go through this, OK? And instead of printing stuff, now we're simply going to say, listen, let's make um, the letters, right? So I mean, if I was to, instead of printing, um, you know, if I print, instead of printing X, what if I print uh, CHRX, right? And let's just to boot, right? Let's go like this so we can see it all on the same screen and it doesn't keep flying past us. Um, there you go. There you go. So that's how you get the letters. So that means that's how you get the keys. So now that we know how to get the keys, boom, let's take away the print and say D. And let's put the key in now, chr x equals, what was the value? That's right, it's the integer. And that's it. Boom, we're done. So now if you look, our dictionary is just like the ASCII table. We've got the keys and the values. See that? Um, that's, that's great. So, uh, nice to see. Um, at this point, I think uh, the next example, so here was the solution again, just for you guys to see it again. The next example I wanted to do is I wanted to go back to the um, row sum program that we had written in a previous lesson. And um, we'd written this. So what this program did here is let's start from line 10. Uh, we created an empty list. We went over, like we created uh, 10 lists, little lists. And then we put three, we added three random numbers from 0 to 9 in that little list, appended it to the big list. And then, um, we, so now we have like, you know, 10 lists of three numbers, so a two-dimensional list. And then we created an em another empty list called sums. And then we um, iterated over the inside lists. And then we called, uh, we, no, we, and then we added or appended the list sum 
which is a function we created to calculate the sum of the list, to the sums list. And then we went ahead and printed everything out. So if I ran this program again, it looks like this, right? 10 lists of, of three integers, and uh, the sums are on the right-hand side. So what I want you to do with this is a, you know, a little different. Uh, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you, first of all, to create a dictionary. Because you see, in this, in this code here, I actually have like another list to hold the sums, right? So what I'd like you to do is to create a dictionary which uh, will do the same thing, but now all of these guys, all the guys on the left, right, all these lists are the keys, and the sums will be your values. Except you're going to run into a big problem, and I'm going to warn you about it right now. You cannot have lists as your keys. Why not? Anyone know? You guessed it. It's because lists are mutable. And that breaks the rule. One of the two rules for lists, for sorry, for dictionaries, right? Is that one, the keys must be immutable. Two, the keys are unique. So if you put in another uh, key pair with the same key, it overwrites the original one. However, you can change, you can change um, things into a tuple simply, right, by going like this. If you go tuple, and this I forgot to mention in my last video, uh, but it's on my website. So notice now, all of the left-hand side lists are changed into tuples. And guess what? Tuples are immutable, so they're fine to go in as the key. So what you're looking at right there is the key value pairs. But of course, it's not in a dictionary. It's in two separate lists. I don't want that. I want you to modify this code. Oh, and by the way, while you're at it, uh, you could basically just replace this whole list sum function with the built-in sum function in Python. So then you don't have to have another function. But it's kind of nice to, to be able to write your own sum function, but use the built-in one. It'll be, your code will be shorter. Okay, so give it a shot now. Pause the video. All right, let's do the solution. Let's do the solution. So let's change this guy. Now, the way I'm going to change this guy is I'm not going to modify this file. Let's save it as a different file name. Uh, instead of calling it row sums, let's call it row let's call it row sums uh, with you know dictionaries or something like that. Okay, so now what are we gonna do? Hmm. Well, we we have to create the lists. There's nothing we can do. We're gonna first of all let's get rid of this. Kaplow. We don't need that. And the other thing we're gonna do is um, we're not going to need this sums thing, okay? But what we are going to do is we are going to create a dictionary. So let's go, here's our dictionary, and it's empty right now. And uh, we're, we don't need this loop either, okay? And we don't need this either, because we're going to print out the dictionary after we're finished populating it. So essentially, we just need to create, first of all, you know, the, the lists. Um, but, but here is one issue. And the issue is, is that all of these guys are lists. That's not really what I want. Because I cannot use lists as the key in a dictionary. So therefore, all I'm going to do is before I append it into the big list, I'm simply going to change it to a tuple right there. And so now, if I, if, if I simply was to print uh, L, 
right? And I and I run this. There you see my big li my the the container is a list, but everything inside of it is round brackets, which means dun, 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 it's a two. Those are all tuples. Perfecto. Um, so now what I'm going to do, right, is okay. I've created my dictionary, and then I'm going to populate my dictionary by iterating through. Um, well, actually, you know, I, I don't even actually need to do it here. I could actually simply um, just do it right here. Uh, yeah. Why do I need to create a separate list? I don't. Because I don't need to have another container. So I'm going to go like this, take that out, and then I'm going to. Uh, yeah, I need that, but I'm not going to append it to the big list because I don't want to have another container. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this. First, I have to create my empty, oops, empty dictionary. And then right here, once I've created the inside uh, tuple, I'm going to say, listen, let's, let's add that to the dictionary. Boom. And then, what's going to be the, the key, right? Obviously, I have to make it a tuple on line 10. I can't leave it as A because that won't work. It's, it's, it'll be a, a list. But that's fine. Now, what, what's the key? Well, the key is the sum of A. And I said you could use the built-in sum. And there it is. It's just SUM of A. Done. And so now, instead of printing L, let's print D, which is the dictionary. Let's run it. And there it is. OK? So you can see 4 plus 5 plus 2 is 11. Perfect. 6 plus 5 plus 7 is 18. That's great. But there's one other thing I want to do. And that is, uh, I would like to print these guys out. So I want to, you know, like, for example, instead of just printing D like this, right? Wouldn't it be nice if I could print all of those rows and sums out? And let's try that. So let's go for, this is pretty easy, right? For key in D.keys. And I don't have to go D.keys. I could just go D. And then I'll just go print the key, which is the tuple in this case, and then the lookup, right, which gives me the sum. And when I run this, perfect. There it is. There they all are, right? Except there's only one little thing I want to change and I want to add to this, and that is these are not in order. I want them printed in the order of the sum. Hmm, in the by the order of the sum. So not the obviously like if you think okay, you know, if I was to order this by key, how would I order it by key? I mean, if the keys were strings, yeah, that would make sense. I, I could probably do that more easily. But in this case, how would I order it by the values or the sum? of those tuples. And I'm going to give you a hint here. I'm going to say, don't write a function to do this. Instead, look at what we've studied before with sort, because sort has a key. And more specifically, actually, I'm kind of leading you down the wrong path by saying this. But if you remember, um, we went, uh, you know, if we go, oh, well, first we got to go into Python. If we go uh, help list, right, and uh, list has dot sort, right, and you might think, okay, well, great, but this is a dictionary. Uh, that's true, however, if you do you know, if you if if you go, all right, here, let's get out of this. 
if you say this is D and then let's go um, D dot keys, right? D dot keys gives you a list. And so you could sort that list. Now, this one just happens to be sorted by chance, right? But uh, our tuples are not sorted. So you could sort them. But the reason why I said I'm leading you down the wrong path is because you can't use sort in a for loop because it returns nothing. It's an in-place sort. So what type of a sort will return a new sorted? And the answer to that is this, sorted. Sorted is just like sort. And it also accepts a key. Take a look right here, right? And it returns the new sorted list, which, by the way, you're going to need if you want to iterate over it. So that's all the help I'm going to say in terms of hints. Uh, let's go back to the code. And I'll reiterate what I'm looking for. When I run this, I'm the it's printing all the tuples and their sums out, but the sums are not sorted. I want this to print out where the sums are sorted. So pause the video now and give it a shot. All right, let's do it. So the solution. Listen, I'm going to actually use sorted here because I can't use sort. Because sort's not going to return anything, as I mentioned earlier. And I need, if you say for something in, if you're going to do a for loop, like for example, if I did range, right? Range returns something. It's an iterable. But sort by itself doesn't, doesn't like, you know, if I did, um, uh, what is it? D dot keys and then dot sort. This, this is not going to return anything. So if I run this, it, 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 it doesn't do anything. Uh, actually, let, let's see, it says, um, yeah, but, oh, I see. OK, so no problem. I could go like this. I could go change d.keys into a list. And then I could sort it. But it's not going to work. And. Um, None type object is not iterable. Exactly. That's what I wanted to kind of stress to you is that dot sort returns none, nothing. So that's not going to work. Um, what if I, here, you, you know, like, let me go back over here. Let's to test stuff here. If I go, okay, so d dot keys. Yep. All right. So what if I did sorted? Uh, D dot keys. Oops. And yeah, that does return a list. So now I don't even actually have to put list here. I could just go sorted, right? And then go um, D dot keys. And that should work. So if I run that, it works. Um, but it looks like it's working, but it's not. If you because because of the two sevens, right? Because fourteen is less than seventeen. It's not working. Twelve is less than fifteen. So what's not working? Well, if you notice, what it's actually sorting is the keys. So if you look on the left hand side, look one 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 two four five six eight. Ah, so it's actually sorting the keys, not the values. Hmm. Hmm. How do we fix that? No problemo. Watch. You go comma, key equals, and if you're wondering, you know, how am I coming up with this, right? Again, it was just from, uh, it was just from here, help sorted, where you can say, yep, sorted the iterable, right? Which is the list of keys, and then now you can specify, don't get confused, don't get confused between the two words called key. The sorted function, the key, word here, the word K-E-Y right here, refers to a function that is used to sort the iterable. Whereas the 
term key in a dictionary has a completely different meaning, although they are the same word. They don't mean the same thing. You see what I mean? Like, it's so easy to get confused on this because d.keys is a list of the keys of the dictionary. Whereas this key is expecting a function that is going to sort the iterable, which just happens to be a list of integers. Or, no, uh, not a list of integers, a, a list of tuples. Okay? So this is how we do it. We go, uh, we're going to sort it based on the key. And how do we get the key? DK. Okay, yeah, so guess what? I got to remember my own definitions, right? The key argument right here on line 13 accepts a function. It's not a function call per se, but a function name. So what function name returns, let's go back to help dict, what function in, of the dictionary returns the value? And you notice it's this one, dot get. That's actually a function because it has the brackets, right? So that's why this, dis, this, that's why this doesn't work. Um, th this isn't going to, we can't say d equals dk, first of all, because k is automatically passed because that's what we're sorting through. But even if we did this, this is not going to work either because it's not a function call. If we run this, it's still going to fail. What we need is key to be a function. And the only one that is a function is dot get. But you might be tempted to type in this. And that's wrong too. And the reason it's wrong is because that's a function call. We're not looking to, ex to execute a function call at that location, but rather we're looking to simply specify the function name. And that would be d.get. So if we ran that, it works. Now, notice we got 4, 7, 8, 10. And the cool thing is, all the corresponding uh, tuples on the left are the right ones. So, so 0, 2, 2 is 4, 3, 0, 4 is 7, and so on. So that's pretty cool. And that's a really neat um, way to sort things by value. Because if we left this part off, notice it's just going to sort. If we, if we leave this off, now it's going to sort it by key. So if we run this again, now it's sorted by keys, right? Look at 0, 1, 3, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9. However, if we put it back and we run it, now it's sorted by value. Beautiful. How awesome is that? Nice. OK, so the next thing that I want to do is I'd like to show you guys how to increment a value in a dictionary. So um, in this situation here, we have Mary, Bill, and Doug are the keys, and the values are 22, 13, 33. If I want to increase Mary's age from 22 to 23, I would simply go like this. I would say Mary, oops, right? That returns to me the 22, right? But if I want to create a new entry with Mary, then I would say equals. Now the question is, look what I do now, is I say D again Mary, which, oh, I keep typing Marky. Uh, but now I'm going to go plus one. And so now if I type in what D is, Mary is 23. Also notice that the order of it changes. And again, I'm going to repeat, repeat what I said last lesson. Dictionaries are unordered. The order doesn't matter. But notice here, now Mary is 23. So if I did this again, now Mary is going to be 24. So in essence, what I'm doing here is the equal sign creates the new value 
So I'm wiping out the old pair. The old pair was Mary 23. And now I'm, I've, you know, and because dictionaries have to be unique, I can't have two keys with Mary Mary. So it, it, it deletes the old one, right? And um, uh, essentially, by going plus one, I'm putting in the new value. So having learned this now, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to give you a new assignment. And also, it's going to be a combination of what you've learned here, OK? And what I want you to do is I want you to go to the internet and find a, a, an article just from any, you know, you can go to a news website, get an article, um, have it be like, you know, three or four paragraphs long at least, and encapsulate it in a, in a string. So you could say S equals quote, 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 and then, you know, um, if I was to do it myself here, if I go and uh, we could, you know, we could go to something like uh, Wikipedia or you know, and look up uh, Wikipedia and look up something like Linux or something. And, okay, so you would just essentially uh, take a whole bunch of paragraphs here, something like this, right? You just scroll down a little bit and boom. Okay, so now I've got some, I've got some text and you could copy it. Uh, preferably without these funny superscript stuff, but essentially, um, you, just, you don't have to go here. You could go anywhere you want. Uh, like I said, a, a news thing or something. And then you just go Control V. And then, um, so now, you know, um, we would have, oh. We, well, we, at the top, we'd have to have, um, yeah, S equals. There it is. There's the S equals at the top. I don't know if you can see that with my image there. But there it is. And then at the bottom, uh, you would just go quote, quote, quote. And so S is, there you go. So F, it's basically like a long string. Try and get one without these, without these um, funny symbols in it but yeah preferably one with just letters and spaces and periods you know like an article or something from the internet and once you've done that what I want you to do is I want you to iterate through this entire giant text string go through each and every letter which is really simple you know it's just a string it doesn't matter if it's big and when you do put every letter into a dictionary. So obviously the dictionary is going to have a maximum of, well, obviously you're going to have more than 26 letters because you've got spaces and periods and other perhaps punctuation. doesn't matter though. What I'm looking for is every time you run into a letter that you've already got in the dictionary, increment the value by one. Essentially what I'm asking you to do is to count the occurrence of every letter. And once you have a dictionary with all the occurrences of every letter in that article, then print out those, the letters in sorted occurrence order. In other words, tell me what are the most common letters in that string? That's what I'm looking for, okay? So um, pause the video and give it a shot. This is going to take you a while. This is a kind of a combination of everything we've learned in dictionaries. So don't give up after five minutes. Uh, this should take you around maybe like half an hour or so, something like that. All right, we're back. So uh, let's give it a shot. It's actually not as bad as you might think. So let's make a new file. And. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's save it in uh, data structures and let's call it um, something like um, most common chars.py 
I don't know. I just made that up. Most common characters. Um, now what we're going to have to do, obviously, this is the hard part, right? Is um, we're going to have to say s equals now a humongous string. And I'm going to paste this in later because uh, I'm going to paste this into here later because I just want you to see the code first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, again, I'm going to create a dictionary. By the way, of course, you know dictionaries don't have to be called D. I just like doing that because it, it reminds me it's a dictionary. And so, you know, I mean, at, at this point here, um, if, I, if I go into, I, I went to Wikipedia again and I got the history of Linux here, you can see it. And um, I can, you know, just take something like that and then just go control C and, and just put it here for now. Um, and that's fine, and I'll, I'll put more in later to make it more accurate. But right now, I want to iterate over every letter in there. So I'm going to say for, uh, let's just say for letter, right, in S. And what am I going to do if I, if I uh, iterate over those guys? So I'm going to say, well, the first thing I want to do, okay, so I'm just going to say the, the easy part is if the letter is already in my dictionary. If it's in, if it's in d.keys, then I want to, now in, in the beginning it's not, right? In the beginning it's not. But if it is in there, then what am I going to do to it? So we've already done this before. We're going to say d letter equals the previous value plus one. Done. However, what if it's not in there? So if it's not already in there, then what should we set its value? If that letter is not already in our dictionary, then we should set the value of that letter key equal to one. In other words, that's the first time we found that letter, and there you go. Now, um, if we, let's just, you know, let's just print D and run this. And we'll take a look at what it looks like. Uh, there it is. Okay. Yep. It tells us how many times each letter is occurring. Notice, you know, look at this T here. That's, that's a seven times, right? There's seven of those T's. So I want to, I don't want to just print them out. I want to print them out uh, kind of sorted by value. And we did this before, right? So we'll say for key, or in this case, we can say, you know, uh, for letter in sorted, and we'll go uh, d.keys. Okay, and then we'll say key equals D dot get like we did before and then we're gonna go print and then we'll say print the letter and print the value of the letter okay so now um, if we run this yay okay and by the way listen uh, I think sorted actually no hey look what is this thing at the end where it says there's 11 of them and there's just a blank here? Do you know what that is? What's a, what's a blank? That's right. It's a space, isn't it? Yeah, perfect. So, but I don't want it to be printed out in that order. Uh, personally, I'd rather see it um, printed in reverse order. So I can actually go like this. I can go comma reverse equals true. Just like sort, right? And so now, uh, okay, yeah, there it is. So um, let's run it again. Yeah, so it's like it's running out of space. By the way, this thing right here, the reason why it looks so odd 
is because that's actually, uh, I believe that's a new line character. So it's going new line and there's two of them. So that's kind of cool. Um, but now if you really want to make it work with uh, everything, you'd have to paste everything in there. Okay? So one thing where this isn't really working well is if we run this, um, you notice that this T is a lowercase t and this is an uppercase t. That's not really working right because those t's should all count as one t. So we can change this simply by going like this. We can say uh, letter equals letter dot lower. And so when we do that and we run it, now everything is lowercase and you notice we, you don't have 7 plus 2 now it's 9 and that's correct okay and also if you want to get rid of these like non character non letter stuff if this like ampersand and comma and and if you want to get rid of this space and stuff that's really easy too here's a special something i can teach you you say if letter um, is alpha. So now is alpha will only return true. I've got to tab everything in. This will only return true if the letter is an alphabet. So if we run this now, notice all the commas and everything else are gone. Notice what are the most common letters. T-E-O-A-R. See, those are the most common ones. Okay, so if you're curious about the is alpha thing, you can just go help str because it's a string function. And if you come down here to, uh, well, we can just look for it, is alpha, there it is. So it says return true if all characters in S are alpha alphabetic and there is at least one character in S, false otherwise. So essentially, um, if I did something like is A, if I go is alpha, like that, and that's true. And then of course I could also do uh, capital A and that's also true. But if I do space, it's false. Or if I do, for example, um, a period, that's false. Or if I do something like an ampersand, uh, that's also false. Okay. Uh, also, by the way, you know, if I do a number, that's also false. So, is alpha is quite helpful in this regard because now it, we're just going to skip over anything that is not a letter. And so in order to finish this up, to kind of get a better feel for what are the most common letters, it's not really going to work if we just use, you know, a partial sentence. Why don't we go back here and we select a whole bunch more. And let's say up to about here. And we go Control C. And then we come over here. And then we'll simply come over here and go Control V. Now, um, now th there's, there's a lot of text here because I can scroll to, to the right, but that's okay um, because my program should still work. If I run it, F5, now you'll see I have 251 E's, so E-T-I-A-N-O. Those are S and R. So I would say... Let's start from R, since that's over 100. These are definitely the most popular letters in the English language, because I copied an English text. Now, you could try this with other texts, but it's kind of cool that our program, which is quite simple, relatively simple, right, uh, was able to achieve this in like one loop. So. Uh, there you go. That's the lesson for today.